Hi there, it's Rusty with Springfield Leather. We thought we might take a minute and do some uh, instructional videos like what we've been doing, kind of follow up. Something that we get a lot of questions on is adhesives. And when we first started talking about it, we thought, well, we would just do one on contact cement, which is one could really be done basically, specifically on contact cement. But you know, it made me think that we carry a lot of different glues and adhesives, so maybe we ought to take a chance and just kind of go through a few of them, give you a few of the basics, and then I'll show you what they look like when they come out and kind of a few different ways how to utilize them. Some of your basic ones, Phoebings, Leathercraft Cement, it's good adhesive. Uh, it's a water-based adhesive. It, it's stronger and better than something like an Elmer's glue, but that's basically what you're looking at. It looks like that when it comes out. I'll show you a little bit about that. Neo Weld, it's a glue that works on contact. Um, kind of a funny glue though, because when the cows come home, it still won't be dry. It'll never dry. It'll be sticky forever. Evertac is a water-based contact cement. Works well. A lot of people have their preference. It doesn't have a real harsh smell. Sometimes people like that a little bit better than they do some of your chemical-based contact cements. Speaking of which, this is a master's contact cement. And this is a barge brand contact cement. People ask us a lot of times, which one's better? Well, in reality, they're about one and the same. What your preference is, is the one that you should use, really. Uh, barge is a little bit more expensive than the Masters. Masters is, is just as good as the barge. They do a good job. Now, when you get into chemical-based contact cements, they usually will have their own thinners. And a thinner uh, will really make your glue go a little further makes the use of it a little bit nicer and helps it last a little longer. Now, you might have found out somehow or another that you could use one thinner on, on a couple of different glues, but if you're going to ask me, I'm going to recommend that you keep your barge thinner with your barge cement and your master's thinner with your master's cement. Uh, things like lacquer thinner and stuff like that, sure, they'll clean the glue up and they'll clean it off of things, but they're going to, it almost like it curdles it. Uh, if you've used the wrong thinner with the cement before, you know it just kind of turns it into curdled milk. Uh, so I'd recommend that you keep your brand specifics together and then that way you don't have any issues because glue isn't cheap. Okay, let's start with the contact cement since that's what we're talking about. I kind of like one of these containers. Um, what I usually will do is, is I like to work with my glue a little bit thinner and so I'll about two-thirds with cement and then I'll top the rest of it up with thinner and just shake the snot out of it. Downside to plastic is, is that the chemical base begins to evaporate over time after not being used. It seeps through the sidewalls so the glue can dry out in it after a while. So you may have to add a little thinner. If you get your cement and you go to open it and it's a little thin or a little thick, add a little bit of thinner to it, shake it up. Now it will get to a point where it becomes rubbery and it's pretty much gone. It's toast. Good thing about this is it has a brush on it. Now, a lot of these cans will have a brush made to it too, but what you'll notice when you open it and you use a full can, you've got cement all the way to the top of that brush. It's okay if you're ready for it and you're prepared, but being able to use one of these plastic containers allows you to adjust the brush into the cement deeper. You can make that adjustment, just slide it down as you use your cement. You just push your brush down and you can use it just right off the tip and then you don't have to worry about all that glue up there. I'll give you a tip too, e either on the can or on these, if you put a little bit of Vaseline around the top of that thing, it won't stick. You'll be able to open it up every time. So, my preference, you do what you want. Whenever you use a contact cement straight out of the can, especially after you've had the can for a little bit, like I said, it'll become thick. And when you put thick contact cement on, what you basically end up with is you end up with a glob in the middle and then you get it thinner as it goes out. Still has the same effect a lot of times, but it's rubbery, it's thick, it's mushy, it seeps through the material sometimes uh, in that specific spot where it's thick. Just not real happy to work with. So again, if you'll thin it down a little bit, you'll be able to see how it kind of spreads out for us a little bit nicer. And if you'll go from the center out, a lot of times you'll keep from getting much glue on the outside edge of your pieces. Now I'm not being very careful for the fact that I'm just not, I'm not really making anything. I'm just wanting to show you this for the sake of seeing it. Put a piece of paper underneath of it, you can just run right off the edge. The only thing you got to be careful of is, is that eventually you're going to work back over that spot. 
once I put my glue on there, my contact cement, contact cement works on contact. Now, a lot of times people will take and put their adhesive on this piece and they'll put their adhesive on the other piece and then they'll just stick them together and they'll press them down. Well, that's true, it is on contact, but the idea behind contact cement is for it to be dry or have the appearance that it's dry. You notice how stringy it is when it's wet. If you'll let this set 20 minutes, let it absorb into it, then put your two pieces together, that's really the contact that they're talking about. That's what you're trying to accomplish. Now, the interesting thing about contact cement is, is that it evaporates eventually and leaves the glue behind, but it absorbs into the material. Now, leather is such a porous material that it absorbs in quite a ways. So what you really want to do is, is you want to put enough glue on it for it to absorb into it and adhere to the fibers. Once it's dry, I like to put a second thin coat on and now I'm adhering to the glue that's adhered to the fibers. Because what'll happen is when I let this dry, it's gonna look very rough and very dry. You really won't be able to tell this wet look that it had, it will kind of be gone. So when I apply a second coat over it, I'm really getting a good adhesion. Now, if you're just sticking them together and you're gonna sew them up, sure, one coat works. But if you really want a good bond so that out on the edge of something, like I say, a wallet, you're putting it together, you wanna have that edge so that it's nice and tight, doesn't show where the leather's beginning to separate, throw a second coat of glue on, even if you just do it around the perimeter and let it dry as well. Now, I'm not a very patient person, as you may know. So what I like to do is I like to cheat. I like to take a hairdryer, speed this process up. The first coat, if you're gonna do a two coat process, the first coat can be absolutely dry, it can be days old. It does not matter how old it is, as long as it's clean. So I'm gonna dry this real quick and then we'll apply a second coat. That's really pretty good. Contact cement's a funny thing because it just, you know, if you take and put it together wet and press it, it will adhere eventually, but it just never seems like you get the same adhesion as you will when you do it correctly. And along with not being a patient person, I'm kind of a tightwad, and so I've even tried to go to Lowe's or uh, Home Depot or someplace like that and buy uh, a brand of, of uh, contact cement designed really for wood. And I'll tell you, it works, but it doesn't work. And that's, it, it's kind of funny because it has more of an oil base to it. And so you get an adhesion, but you don't get a lasting adhesion no matter what you do. So for the sake of showing you what we've got going here, you don't really see much of a difference, but I promise you that you will get a tremendous difference. Now this really should be about dry enough that it doesn't stick. Now if you've got glue on your fingers like I do, it's gonna to stick to that. But for the most part, it should be dry enough that it doesn't really pick up when you tap on it. You don't want it as wet as that. And like I said, on your first coat, it can be just absolutely dry. After about a 20 minute period on your second coat, third, 30 minute period, it's gonna dry so much that you're not gonna get a good adhesion. So you wanna make sure on your, on your coat that you're gonna to stick together, no matter if you're doing a two coat or a one coat, you want to make sure that you really don't let that set too long. But yet, you don't want it too wet either. Now, whenever you set those, you better be prepared because when it sets, it's going to set and it is going to stick. And I'll tell you another trick that I like to do is, is to take a hammer and you can do it on a marble slab or something. You wanna set those fibers and you wanna set that glue nice and tight together and you will not pull that thing apart. I've seen a lot of times we sit and play around with it and once it's set, now it's still fairly moist right at the moment, but in an hour or so when that's completely set and done, you'll tear the fibers of the leather before you, before you tear the glue a lot of times. You can re release it to some degree with a little bit of heat. But for the most part, once it's there, it is there. Okay, you know your barge works the same way. Your Masters works that way. There's some other brands called Van Grip. They work well, same process. Most of your contact cements are all gonna work the same way. They're gonna work, quote unquote, on contact. Now, something that they're not gonna do though, 
is, is you're not going to stick a contact cement, you're not going to apply something with a contact cement to the outside of it very happily. Um, the other thing is, is if you get a little bit of contact cement on the outside of your leather, even if it's vegetable tan leather, if it's an oil tan leather, if it's a finished leather like this upholstery hide, doesn't matter what it is. If you get a little contact cement on there, you can take an all-purpose eraser and it'll just roll that contact cement right up off of it. You'll really find it handy when you're dyeing something and man, you've gotten all this work in it and you're putting a good dye coat on and all of a sudden you find a nice natural colored spot right in the middle of your holster. You take that eraser and it'll just roll that right off of there and it'll take dye just like it normally would. Now, what I said though was is that you're not going to apply dye, or I'm sorry, uh, glue to something like this and adhere it to the outside and expect it to stay there. And the reason is is because it's not able to absorb into the fibers, it's not able to really get a good bond. You've got too slick of a face on it, you've got too slick of an edge on it, it's not going to stick well. That's where something like this Neo Weld comes in handy, and I really like it. You can use these leather cements, but again, you end up there, they don't really have any fibers to bond to. Now, I'm gonna jump around a little bit, but this Neo Weld's kind of fun. Uh, some people like it, some people hate it. It, like any glue, has a tendency to possibly clog up a needle in a sewing machine. Your contact cements have the worst tendency to do that, more so than your leather craft cements. Um, or a just a, a, a cement or an adhesive like that. This, since it never dries, will most certainly clog up a needle in a sewing machine, but it's worth it to me when I'm wanting to do what I'm about to show you. Comes out white, smells horrific. Well, not really, but it doesn't smell all that great. Goes on white, but when it dries, it dries clear. And all I'm using here is just a little clipping of a piece of leather. You can use a, a cheap art brush, you can use anything. The fact that it dries clear is pretty nice because I don't get real careful about how I put it on. Um, I just want to get it on there and have it dry and set so that I can do what I need to do with it. If you ever do any kind of binding, like you're going to put a bound edge on, on a uh, portfolio or a purse or a bag or a wallet or something, this works really well because on an eel weld you only have to apply it to one surface. It does not need to be applied to both surfaces like a contact cement would. So you can put it on the one piece that you're going to do your binding with, let it dry, and you're ready to stick. So let's speed this process up just a little bit. Sticky. Very, very sticky. Whenever it's thick like that, it doesn't like to dry very, very quick. You can take that dude and stick it right to the middle of a slick, finished piece of leather and sew it down. Now you're not going to find a cement that's going to adhere that permanently and never have to do anything else to it. But if you're going to sew it down, that is fantastic. It is on there. You can peel the edges of it up, don't get me wrong, but it is on there well enough to sew it without a doubt. I've seen they'll take a couple of rivets and put a rivet in the end of each one and one in the center. Stays down pretty nice. Now the good thing about it is, is if I decided that I didn't like it, I could move it. Peel it off, put it somewhere else. But you need to know something. Depending on the leather that you're using, you may have just taken the finish right off of that piece of leather. Handy, but be careful. It's still sticky enough. to just plug it right back on something else. It is the same way as being able to roll it off. You just kind of roll it off your fingers and peel it off of there. But be careful about what you stick it to because it may, if you've got to peel it back off, it may take the finish off with it. Okay, well anyway, that's kind of a handy one that I like. Like I said, if you're doing a bound edge or something, you put it on there, you can just stretch that edge around, stitch it down and trim it off and you've got a nice clean edge, well bonded well stuffed down. Your leather craft cement hey, you're not getting here, and your Evertac, again your Evertac is a contact cement. I usually use it a lot like I would this, something that you're going to put a little bit of glue on, put together, press, and leave alone. Um, for the sake of being able to do a project, get things done, move right along, I really like using the contact cements and the Neo welds. Um, 
This one has its place though, you know, if you've got, say you've got a book or a Bible or something that you've opened to a spot so many times and it kind of splits, take a little of that and put it right in it, close it, press it, leave it overnight and it'll, it'll hold it together quite well. I think we've covered just about everything that we're going to be able to cover, so until the next time.